Arunwan sir, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Very clear. So please start. Okay, sir. What about uh, Ranjini, ma'am? Ma'am, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, sir. Are you able to hear me? Yes. But we cannot hear you, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, can you be a little bit more louder? Louder? Mic closer, please. Yeah, closer to. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is that fine? I think we need it more, ma'am. Just one minute. Yeah, all right. Okay, by that time, I will start. Yeah, yes. Um, so first of all, uh, I am very uh, proud to wish all my uh, uh, BS members a blissful sesquicentenary. I know that we have a um, long miles to go. Anyways, uh, I'm wishing you all. So let me now uh, invite Jarvis for the introduction. Here we go. Good evening. I hope you all are having another day in paradise. Welcome to all the exuberant educators to the 150th web training series of CBSE Bharat Sahodaya. Now I proudly present today's moderator, Ms. Himoni Bakshi. Ms. Himoni has a decade of experience as a teacher of English language and literature. She is a master in English literature from the prestigious Lady Sri Ram College, Delhi University. She has been actively involved in promoting holistic education and experimental learning among students. She is currently working at Modern School, New Delhi as the high school English language and literature teacher. She is also the subject coordinator of the middle and secondary wing. She has rendered her services as observer in National Achievement Survey, 2021. So Himoni ma'am, wholeheartedly I invite you to moderate this grand session. Please ma'am, over to you. Thank you Arun Mohan sir. Once that is again, very... I invite you ma'am, uh, welcome to Thank this you. grand session. That is very technically nuanced and very interesting. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm all right. uh, Yes, sir. A very good evening, everyone. Before we begin, I would like to extend my gratitude to Dr. Abdul Salam and BTAC for giving me this coveted opportunity. I also extend a very warm welcome to all the participants. It is indeed a pleasure to have each one of you as an integral part of the webinar as we embark together on this fruitful journey of discussion on the role of early year educators in holistic development in this milestone 150th web training series. Continuing with its plethora of endeavors, BTAG and the CBSE Bharat Sahodya community, along with today's remarkably talented resource person, Madam Ranjani Harigopal Dasa, will seek to provide valuable inputs in this session. Holistic development in early years is an approach to learning that emphasizes the importance of the physical, emotional, and psychological well-being of children. A holistic development approach in early years is important when planning and assessing the needs of a child. Especially, it allows the educators to assess the child as an individual and understand what they have achieved and what they have not achieved by looking at how the developmental areas link up and how progress in one area can affect progress in another area. So before we begin with today's interesting session, there are a few things I'd like to brief you about. Kindly keep your device cameras switched on for the session. Any query in the midst of the session can be conveyed through the meeting chat box. In order to have an interactive experience, you may clear your doubts by asking questions. Kindly virtually raise your hand and wait your name to be called out for asking your query. The participants will have the opportunity to receive certificate only after filling up the certificate and feedback form, the link for which will be shared at the end of the session. Kindly stay connected till the end of the session. At this juncture, on behalf of all of us present in the webinar, 
I would like to thank Dr. Salam for empowering us with such enlightening sessions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Abdul Salam, who's the CBSE resource person, master trainer, and CBSE deputy training coordinator of Trivandrum region. Sir is the founder of BTAG, that is Bharat Transformers Academic Group, a consortium of educators and the teaching fraternity across the globe, connecting them together to empower the nation. Sir, it is indeed a pleasure to have your gracious presence, and I would request you to take over and deliver the welcome address. Thank you. Thank you, Kimani, ma'am. Prospector, resource person of the day, Rajini, ma'am. Uh, Prime Secretary of CBSC, Bharat Sakodia, Veena Jacob, ma'am, and uh, of course, our dearest uh, Kimani Bakshi and uh, Mr. Aaron Mo. And all the educators who are very passionate about uh, learning and making changes in the realm of experience and expertise. In fact, uh, we are very happy that we reached uh, 150th episode and uh, we convey the credit to each and every one of you for making this happen and this journey towards uh, you know, excellence will continue with your support and uh, definitely without you, we are nothing. So uh, we are dedicating this session to each one of you, but especially to the foundation builders. Everyone is a foundation builder as far as we are concerned, we educators are concerned. But still, we are focusing upon the foundation stage. That's why I have requested Dhanshini ma'am. Uh, you know, this is actually an exclusive from Dhanshini ma'am dedicating to the foundation builders, that is the uh, pre primary children, you know, and the teachers. How, what are the roles in making, in developing the holistic, you know, uh, growth of children? And we believe that, uh, you know, foundational literacy and numeracy of foremost importance. There is a very recent 150th uh, web training series of BTAC and Bharat Sakodhya is having Ms. Rajini Hari Dasa, Hari Gobal Dasa with us. Everybody has seen her talent uh, at the conclave and also she has given a lot of sessions uh, before for the uh, online webinars. So let us all, you know, welcome uh, Ms. Rajini Hari Dasa and wish her all the very best. And uh, let us look, we are looking forward to a very interesting session. And, uh, Equally thankful to Kimani Bakshi, ma'am. Uh, she is not so well today, but still she made it. Whenever we approach, madam, she says we will do it, sir. So that's the spirit. And uh, I do appreciate uh, Veena Jacob, ma'am, for you know joining us on this platform on the 150th episode. And also each and everyone. I have seen, you know, uh, one teacher while on her bike, she has joined. We could see her, you know, riding her bike, wearing the helmet and all, till she has, you know, joined the session. See, uh, the passion, the dedication is uh, marvelous, overwhelming. So we uh, we feel uh, very much elated, uh, very delighted to, you know, see this kind of uh, enthusiasm and uh, uh, what do you call support from the educators who are the backbone of the uh, building of the nation. So wish you all the very best and thank you for joining. We will continue uh, traveling along with you. Have a good evening and let's lend our ears to Rich. Thank you. Over to Kimani. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. I'm sure you have motivated each one of us here in the webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, amidst us, we also have the distinguished dignitary, Madam Veena Jacob. She is the Joint Secretary of Bharat Sahodya. Madam Jacob has a vast experience in the field of education in many capacities. She has worked as a lecturer in Laurie Memorial Teachers Training Institute. Madam Jacob has been a highly dedicated and action-oriented educator with 15 years of experience 
in school teaching in MGM Residential School. She is currently serving as the principal of MGM International School. She has extensive knowledge of guidance, counseling and school management. Ma'am, we are honored to have your gracious presence amidst us. I request Madam Bina Jacob to felicitate the gathering with her kind words. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Imani Bakshi. Our most respected uh, Dr. Abdul Salam, sir, the director and founder of uh, BTAC and the keystone of Baris Sahodaya. Our most beloved Ms. Rajini Hari Gopal Dasa and uh, Mr. Arun Mohan and all those who have joined us. Good evening. Uh, at the very outset, uh, we would like to congratulate all the teachers, coordinators, vice principals and the principals for securing a wonderful result for your uh, institutions uh, and uh, our wishes for everybody to have uh, yet another successful academic year uh, ahead. And uh, this session is something which is very special, as Sar said. It is a 150th session. I'm so happy and proud to be the part of this uh, session. And, uh, you know, 150th session is made very uh, special because uh, uh, it is exclusively meant for the kindergarten section. And I'm so happy because we have an eminent and vibrant personality our uh, uh, resource person of the day, uh, Jenny Ma'am. I was thinking about her session, you know, it is still in our memory. She took the session for the Conclave Day, as rightly said by our uh, uh, Salam sir. Uh, it is still in our memory and so happy. Uh, and I hope that uh, she will have a magic box containing the wonders uh, that surely can make kindergarten a kindergarten. So, ma'am, we are very proud. Sir, Bharat Sahodaya is very proud of you and we are so grateful for you uh, for giving uh, such a beautiful sessions and sharing your valuable uh, thoughts with us. And uh, may God bless you for all, all your endeavors. And uh, we are so excited to hear you. Uh, we hope that we will have a, a new and uh, different uh, takeaways. And uh, thank you all for joining us. Let us all put our best efforts for uh, making our, our school a positive and a vibrant learning space. And thank you and have a nice evening. Thank you, ma'am, for your enlightening words. Ladies and gentlemen, now we shall proceed to the highlight of today's webinar. Today amidst us, we have very talented Madam Ranjani, with over two decades of engagement in early years with a master's degree in childcare, Madam Dasa is an NCFE UK approved cache assessor and trainer serving the Middle East. She's also serving as a curriculum specialist for BYM Group of Schools, India, and is very strongly associated with BTAG and Bharat Sahodia. Ma'am, on behalf of everyone present, I welcome you and request you to take over the proceedings for the evening. Hi, am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. Clear? Yes. Thank you, Abdul Salam, sir. Thanks a ton to you for uh, giving the opportunity to be a featuring for the 150th session for Bharat Sahodia. Very, very thankful to all the key members of Bharat Sahodia, Bina Jacob, ma'am, and uh, everyone who's associated today. Himanshi, Himani, hi, Himani, thank you so much for moderating. And Arun, a ton thanks to you for all the encouragement and all the support and uh, people who are tech supports to this uh, particular uh, session. To all of them, to each of them, my heartfelt thanks to you. So today we're going to start now, and uh, we don't want to, uh, you know, waste any time because Abdul Salam sir knows that even if he gives me three hours, it's not enough for me because I always have something or the other to, you know, grab time from him. So not going to waste time. We're going to start right away. Welcome to Ranjini's class, and my children are waiting for you. Say hi to all of them. And uh, let's get started. Let's screen share. Uh, OK. Fine. So it's um, 
it's asking me i'm the host right so it's asking me oh yeah it's happening i guess now could you kindly tell me whether you are able to see my screen arun yes ma'am okay thanks arun yeah so i'm ranjini hari ncfe cash assessor and i'm in the middle east region serving here as rightly said by himani and i'm also with some indian schools and always available for bharat sahodia so i would like you to connect me on linkedin i'll be very happy for that professional network and as well as my number is here if you want to connect with me so today's uh, topic is role of early years practitioner in holistic development so in this we're going to cover four topics one is about circle time the next is about observations the other one is how we want to do the activity planning based on your observations and after the activity planning what do you observe and then how we want to take to the next level which is the kind of critical thinking questions so we have four topics very exclusive topics the first one we are going to do is the circle time as you see here it says rise and shine bringing all of them together so children come from different path children come from different walks of life a teacher who's in the class an early years practitioner whom we call as an eyp in early years terminology she you can see a beautiful you know circle mat there yeah you can see a very beautiful mat there and there are circles colorful circles what happens when you have a mat like this in your setting the children are assigned a place once they assign like you know today i'm going to sit on the yellow circle tomorrow yes i have a preference i want to go to the blue next day it to the green i gradually learn the colors as well as early as two and a half year old and i sit in my designated place i learn the kind of the behavior that during circle time i'm supposed to sit like this and how am i going to sit apple sauce criss cross i can't you know stretch my legs like that yeah there is a way to sit in a circle time so what is a circle time circle time is bringing children in the morning together and circle time helps in healthy relationship with children there are a lot of psc issue that is personal social and emotional issue, issues for children that not all the time they get along with each other so the circle time also gives a controlled space can you see that in the picture the children are controlled with a kind of a space in the morning which is actually good for them we are not controlling them actually yeah we are trying to bring their attention to unison then it also serves as a tool to have fun and creative way a lot of activities will happen during circle time we have a lot today i would request that all of you can have some kind of a notepad and please write down because if you implement all of this i'm very sure your circle time in your setting is going to be very exclusive yeah and then first of all whatever we do we need to understand why it is important why are we saying that circle time is important circle time is very important because children grow their strong relationship with their peer they kind of you know support their emotions with their teacher they understand what is socially acceptable behavior right in the morning you cannot push a, push another child you cannot say that you know don't sit here no equality diversity everything comes right in the morning in the circle time so psc is the epitome there then comes what are the other benefits we saw what is a circle time we saw the importance of it now benefits which means the actual benefit that will show up in your learning and development okay so it will help you in speaking see in the picture again let's associate everything with the picture the teacher is saying something with a book yeah and the children want to listen to her or the children is expected to listen to her so speaking and listening because when the teacher is speaking she might ask you a question you might have to speak which means not all together might speak then you have to take turns so circle time is fabulous right go to the next one bonds between the children as i already told you they will understand 
what is a socially acceptable behavior and they tend to grow to accept each and every child with their own emotions they love to value you know they are just growing up to value each other oh you like this okay let me share with you can you move a little bit and sit I, my legs are paining yes of course i will move no worries so you know they are trying to you know have a bond with other children self esteem most important there are many children who lack in their confidence so for their own self esteem that you know i am an individual i come to class everyone likes me and i'm also with all of the other children my teacher likes me so whenever i want to say something i don't have a fear right away i can get up seek permission and i can speak the self esteem is there i don't want to lose out on my self esteem do we think that only adults have self esteem consciousness no even a 2 year old can understand if the child is ignored yeah it's very important interpersonal skills and understanding the children have these kind of an interpersonal skills like you know would you like to get that book for me yes can i give you my crayon you would, would you like to circle it can i have my toy shared with you would you like to take this can i get that from you that kind of a you know conversation happens during circle time better problem solving skills this is like you know it's it's like a blessing for the children who who whose class teacher is having the best circle time because you can better problem solve there are small small problems for children we might think what is the problem for a child at two and a half three and a half four and a half they have actually more problems than us so maybe you know they their parents you know they are traveling probably the nanny would have dropped them they need that kind of the mom touch so they would like to sit next to the teacher's feet yeah and you will not understand you will say that can i get some space would you like to go back and sit no actually the the mom is traveling you do not know probably after 40 minutes the child will try to tell you that my mom is traveling i miss my mom then you will say oh baby i feel very bad for that don't worry come to me so before itself please have that kind of an understanding that if a child is doing something different in on that particular day it's because of the emotions the child has carried along with the child right from the morning you never know what's the what's what's the scenario let's go to the next one okay yeah so when you want to bring all of them together you must have some rules they are called rug rules the rug is nothing but the carpet it call it's called a carpet rule criss cross apple sauce you 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 actually you know tap on your lap and say criss cross apple sauce then you ask the children to cross so you don't have to waste your energy telling the children that could you please sit proper can you cross your legs can you give some space no the chant is criss cross apple sauce if you do this they will cross then you can say hands on your lap can you show your listening ears looking eyes these are the mantra chants these are the class rules the rug rules then you set the behavior there then what do you do okay why should i do circle time why do i get these ideas because the essentials will be you can sing a song with action and i have a game to play depending on the emotions in right in the morning then review the calendar because usually circle time most of the teachers think that you know circle time i must do the calendar days of the week months of the year all the uh, rhymes right from rain rain go away to whatever the rhymes baba black sheep no it's not a typical one you have a lot to do during circle time that's why we chose this topic today you are, apart from your weather apart from your weekly agenda you must use some interactive props some visual cards for them to speak on the thematic lesson of that particular week you must give a crisp starter you must have a magic box otherwise a pillow in slip you know your pillow slip usual pillow slip you can put everything inside it can be as simple as a pillow slip tie a knot and then you know unwind tell them that i'm going to bring something out of this it could be a dinosaur then that particular we were going to speak about dinosaurs count the dinosaurs color of the dinosaurs d is the sound 
talk about the understanding of the world or you call environmental science where do you see dinosaurs do you see them now some critical thinking questions so you set the theme right during the circle time and read stories for a quiet carpet time activity if you feel that that particular day especially friday children mind is already set i'm going to get into the weekend so you will be like you know you can't control your class on a friday so that particular day you should have some kind of a quiet reading activity just to calm them down it's also called the wind down games can you see in the next bit of it wind down games are those games where you do the silent yoga a calm down exercise balancing your mind balancing your thoughts yes so in general in the earlier setting how we split the circle time games is like the following categories general games general games as in you know um, the postman activity trying to have an object go around and put on somebody's back and somebody sees it and then they go around that's a general game musical games with maracas with your you know um, the kind of the um, rattles you make some music and ask the children to sing a song you do the rhythm part which is again you know musical and also you learn the language like slow fast medium a lot of words get into the vocabulary through the circle time that's why we are broadening your vision for looking at the circle time circle time is just not the weather card it's just not the regular rhymes it's something more wind down games we already spoke on the wind down games whenever you see the children very hyper on that particular day come on let's do the yoga darling so that's called wind down calming the mind because you're going to give a concept on that day could be the concept on um, letter sound or could be counting could be backward counting so children need to focus right so you need to calm them down yeah let's go to the next one what happens is first of all there is a deal between the teacher and the children they strike a deal the deal is you have a star chart yes the children are getting the star at the end of the day for that you need to earn your star you need to behave well so sit in a circle the awesome circle mat will help yeah look at the person who is speaking which means what listening skills ears open and eyes focus yes so when you use such terms when you use such chants what happens is you can reserve your energy you don't have to talk a lot or you don't have to keep repeating what you are saying because sometimes we don't think that you know children actually don't like whatever is repeated they don't like they don't respect at all it has to be like you know very rare for them yes so in some classes if you see as the teacher enters and she gives a smile and looks at them they are all are set already because she has been having a very good vibe with them she doesn't waste time with them she doesn't exert a lot she doesn't raise the voice yeah that's the skill of the eyp earliest practitioner fine so sit in a circle look at the person who's speaking wait to speak which means take turns while you speak listen closely open your ears okay so what's the criteria of a circle time you must choose all of us know that whatever you know activity we choose the child has to enjoy and make sure that everyone is engaged otherwise they'll feel bad yeah provide various activities and use a lot of props you know why you want to use props because morning the child is coming with a different emotions unless and until you have some prop to attract the child don't expect the child to look at you because the child is still in the transition of home to school the child doesn't have to look at you right okay now let's get here here it is you know how you want to plan your day for example let's say monday many of us say that you know thank god is friday yes because you have the weekend approaching but here we are going to say thank god is monday yeah why why do you think the children should feel good on monday most of the time you know what happens the children will be sitting like this or the child is almost you know on the carpet they are still in the sunday mood monday morning yeah so you must have your circle time at the outdoor look at the second picture where my mouse is hovering 
have the circle time don't have a rigid rule circle time doesn't have to be inside the class always it can be outside the class yes on a monday morning the children will love the nature love to sit just on a plain mat and have something for them have some props for them read a story for them they will feel good about it or if you feel they are too sluggish they are very slow on that particular day they are still you know like losing interest come on have some musical games let them jump yes fine few say you can have a musical circle yes some nice idea so that's the third picture over here where my mouse is here yes what happens is you give some instruments in their hand give some rattles give some maracas ask others to clap their hands ask a child to tap on foot what do they learn they learn the thematic poem or the rhyme or the song they also get acquainted with the instrument that the teacher is playing if she is able to play or if you play a recorded music you can still stop and ask the child what's the kind of the instrument do you think it's used here that's a critical thinking question right in the morning during circle time don't you think that this is nice during circle time to just open their brains yeah then wednesday you have to you know have a schedule like this wednesday what do you do you want to have a communication round which means you know you choose a game like an alphabet soup can you see this picture where my mouse is hovering here you have a big bowl lots of alphabet you know lots of letters coming in there yeah 26 letters make an alphabet the whole set of alphabet is in the bowl and what do you do you give a big bowl and some letter cards give a big ladle ask them to make a soup yes it's a beautiful song on the soup i'm making a lot of letter soup soup that is dilly dilly is delicious going to cook it on the oven to make this nice and dilly in goes the a ah. then the a ah sound gets in in goes the b b sound gets in the children do this so what happens is after this subtly you're telling the children that today our letter sound is going to be t you're giving an intro you're giving a previous knowledge for the children through the soup song during the circle time the child mind is set yeah on the thursday imagination this is awesome i myself have done a couple of times with my children and the children love you should ask the children to close their eyes just calm and tell them that i'm going to take you to a village come on have the bullock cart yes leave the cars leave the bus come on let's go on a bullock cart darling please hold proper yes you have humps and bumps so you need to hold it then the children will imagine as if you know they're holding and then you will say oh look at the road it's bumpy then the children will move like this it's all imaginary then you will say that okay the cart has stopped can you please get down then you have to say hi vishal can you help meera to get down then he will imagine to give his hand to her she will get down make a pc there personal social emotional relationship with children then what happens okay let's go to the uh you know village what do you see i can see the cow grazing can one of you tell me how the cow you know makes the sound because the next week you're going to speak about animals and their sounds but today you're putting a platform for that during the circle time on an imaginary play very important you never know how it serves yeah next friday final activity we know that we are going to go home yes have you know fun for two more days and come monday morning again a little bit sleepy but my teacher is very smart she will take me to the outdoor she knows how to keep my spirits up then comes your wind down games because friday is like you know children they themselves know that yes we are approaching towards the weekend yes so you can calm them down you can make them think you can give some home assignments for them to think not as a homework for them to think and then ask them to come on monday with some kind of a thought baby go with your mom to the park and count the number of play instruments that you could see there could be a slide could be a jungle gym it could be some seesaw you want to count because the next week you're going to teach him number seven so the child will now go and count and come how, how did you see that how does it look what's the shape everything you ask him the next week during the circle time it is called retention bringing on their memory back to what they saw during the last weekend it's fun frolic as well as 
it is working in their mind. So it's important to have some kind of a role play. So all this are not a, a scheduled one. It, probably in a Thursday will work for Wednesday. Wednesday might work for Tuesday. Tuesday is on a Friday. Depends on the mood of the children. So it's best to go with the mood of the children. Okay, let's get into the next one. Fine. So we have some games here. Yeah. So in those games, what happens is class rules. As I told you, first stick to the rug rules. Then feeling rounds. How do you feel today? Then what you have to do, show some emoji cards, happy, sad, everything, you know, or surprise, exciting, have some small emoji cards for them and ask them, how do you feel today? If they say, I'm feeling sad, please take them closer to you. Yes, please ask them, what happened here? What made you sad today? How can I help you? Or how can your friends can help you? Then the child will try to put the emotions out. If the child cries, it's okay. You should tell them, assure that it is okay to feel sad. It's okay to cry. Now, let's be excited because we're going to do something and give that particular magic box in his hand and let him lead the class. He will feel good about it. Yeah, you are trying to help in his emotions. Cross the circle, numbering cards. This is a beautiful game worth playing during circle time for numbers. You give two sets of numbers. Yeah. And then the person who's sitting on the rear end with the number two and the other person will try to match by looking from here. They have to raise above their head. Two and two will go together. They will stand in pairs. Yes. And the one who's very brainy will count. Two plus two is equal to four. Just by with his fingers, he will count. Or if you have some objects, he will count. So cross the circle with numbering cards helps in counting. Identifying numbers. Pairing similar different jigsaw puzzle i don't have to explain jigsaw puzzle for you you know it let's go to this one freeze music and moment especially on a friday please have this especially on a monday morning please have this thank god it's monday pass the tambourine yeah you know the tambourine the the the, the kind of the instrument and you have to stop see you have to keep passing the teacher will count the numbers one two three four when she says ten Whoever has the tambourine has to sing a song. Probably you would have taught him a lot of rhymes, but you want him to memorize on the rhymes or sing. Probably he's very shy. He doesn't want to sing. So, wantedly, you will stop in that particular number and say that, oh, today, very good. So, you know, Kavya is going to sing today. So, the child will be able to sing something. Yeah? Come out of the shyness. Also, for you to observe whether the child learned the rhyme. I'm thinking of an animal. It's a picnic memory game. Yeah, it's a memory game. I'm thinking of an animal. Then you can say it has white and black stripes. I also see this pattern on the road. This and this and this. When everyone gives a point, finally the child says it's zebra. What's the phonic sound? You talk about everything there. Finally, the child finds it's zebra. I pat my back. Journey talk. Very, very important. This gives life skill to child. Yeah, if you have to pack a bag, you put your, uh, you know, garments inside, you put your favorite snack inside, you put your napkins and, and water bottle and whatever you want. You want to have a favorite toy? Okay, put inside. It's a picnic. Your teacher will definitely not say no to you. Yeah. My dad got something very special. I want to show it to my friend. No worries, darling. Put it in your bag. So they will talk about it. This will give an idea whenever mom travels or dad travels, they will know what to put inside their bag. Don't you think you're enabling them right at two and a half, three and a half, four and a half for this? The parents are going to be very happy with you. Yeah. Go to the next one. Portrait. Bring yourself on paper. It's a beautiful activity right in the morning. Just give them some paper. Yeah. Especially on a Friday morning. Ask them to draw themselves. I have curly hair. I have brown eyes. I have greenish eyes. No, I have black eyes. My, my, my hair is very, you know, soft. Yeah. And, and I'm like this, I'm like that. They try to self-portray themselves. Yeah, they bring out the best out of them. Self-esteem, self-confidence, everything is there. Snap, distribute a pack of cards among the members in your circle. And they have to match the card, just like your numbering cards. It's the same kind. Okay, if you do all of this, what do you get? Look at the pictures here on the right side. Communication and cooperation. The two C's, 
for the CT. CT is circle time. You get the two C's there. One is cooperation. You can see children are together, cooperating, talking, listening to the teacher, and communication, learning a lot of new words to their vocabulary. That's most important. Let's go to the next one. I have more um, games for you. These are called fishes in the sea. I hope, see, you can take a snapshot of this. No problem. Yeah, it's very important. Otherwise, you can write a note on that. You can have some kind of a clownfish, a flounder fish, a snapper fish. That is the visual card, a printout of these and stick it onto the popsicle stick. Okay, and then do what? Choose the children, whomever, and then give equal chances for all of them. Then the teacher, when they call up the name of the fish, then that particular child who is having the snapper fish card will go around the circle, keep going. And you know what will happen when the child is going? The teacher will say, the tide is turning, which means, you know, the children have to turn around and walk in the opposite direction, right? You have some rules. When you teach them, they love these. Then you have to say, rough seas. Then the children will speed up. They have to come back. And if you say calm seas, the children will slow down. What happens here is you give them the idea of speedening also. Yeah, because sometimes some children are very sluggish. You give them an activity, 40 good minutes you give. Still, they are sitting with the first stringing beat. Why? They have a set lethargicness in their body. They need to be pepped up. So these kind of activities during the circle time are a blessing. Yes. When you say rough seas, they will speed and up. They will see each other and speed and up. They will not understand much, but they will do while seeing their peer. And then calm seas, the children will slow down. Many a time, if the children are shouting in your class and you're entering the class, you know what you should remember? You should tell them that calm seas, then they will be quiet. You must use such, you know, kind of a tactics. When it, when it is not circle time also, probably after lunch, 1.45, 2 o'clock, children are completely, you know, jumping and hyper and don't want to listen. Get into the class and tell them, calm seas, they will sit down. Yeah, they have fun doing that. Okay, sharks. When you say sharks, children will all, without running, that's the rule. That's called the rug rule. Baby, you cannot run. But when I say shark, you have to quickly come and get back to your circle. That's important. Then you win the game. I give you a star. Right? So that's about this. This uh, Mr. Bear likes honey is a beautiful game. A child with a honey pot, you know, a honey pot picture is made to sit as a bear in the middle. The other children, you know what happens? I have played this game and the children used to enjoy a lot. The children will sit around another child. And the most important point in this game is the teacher will convey the uh, child only through her eyes, which means all the children are looking at the teacher. They will not look anywhere. Otherwise, they'll lose the game. So when she gives a direction and look at that particular child and nods the head, that particular child should get up, come into the circle, snatch the pot and run. Then the others will say, wake up bear, wake up bear. Then this child who was sitting like a bear will wake up and then, you know, try to catch the child. Yeah, it's very interesting. I love this game and it is really interesting. There is a space on my right. This is a game for math and also direction, also positional language, right and left. So you must have chairs for your children. If you have 10 children or 25 children and have the 26th chair also there. So the chair which is there, which is vacant, and the child who's sitting there should say that, you know, I have a space on my right. I like to invite. Then the child should call the name. For example, Ram. She has to call Ram. Then what happens is children learn each other name. They, it's, it's a wonderful game. You all are going to start with your academic year. Now it's a beautiful game. Yes. In June, if the children come in, it's a beautiful game. They would have kind of, you know, forgotten their friends' names and all of that. In June, they will love to, you know, uh, remember the children's name. And this uh, circle time activity will help in that. PSE, relationship building. Yeah. And then Ram got up, right? So that chair is empty. So now this particular child who sits next to Ram, yeah, say if it's Kavya. Now Kavya will say, I have a chair to my left. Now the children are learning, right? children are learning left the children are learning the other names of the children who are in the class they also have the etiquette to invite 
Yes, you are giving that very subtly at this age. So this is the one gives you positional language in math, but you're going to teach them at a later stage. Yeah, large ball game. This is very simple. I throw the ball, then it's like row, row, row a boat. It's the song. So roll, roll, roll the ball right across the ocean or the room. Roll the ball to Kavya, then they can roll it too. So you have to keep calling. So children also get to sing. Some children don't want to sing. But in the circle time, if it is a game with the ball, they love to sing. You can hear their voices, right? Yeah. So now we are done with the circle time activities. The essential of circle time. Yeah. The criteria of circle time, which is communication. Yes. And collaboration. And we spoke on the different kinds of games the different kinds of props that we can use. I hope this is really helpful for you. Let's get into a little bit on observation. What is observation, right? Observation is something that ongoing for you as a teacher. First, look into the right picture, like it says, start here. Observation means you have to look. First of all, as an adult, you have to look. You have to listen to your child. Then you have to note down, which means describing. I'm going to give you a sample of observation. I want you to cl click a snapshot of that. You must use them and it will be of great help in early years for you. So you observe something. Let's go to the left. The practice of looking at and listening to. Yeah. As an adult, if we don't look at and if we don't listen, then definitely we can't expect that from the children. It's difficult. Yes. To what you are going to say, as Himani rightly said, you're going to see how they are developing. What are they doing? What are they learning? They are doing everything through play. So how can I offer more experience for them? That is your planning, which is going to come. The next topic is activity planning. Okay, what is the quality? If I say that I'm a good observer, what do you think I should have? I should observe the good interaction that the child is having between friends between another child usually the observation doesn't have to be too long it can be a short narrative one but what is more important it it has to have facts so it should be factual accurate sufficient when i say sufficiently detailed doesn't mean that it runs to pages i'm going to show you a sample of how an observation is then you'll get the best idea okay when to observe a child miss ranjan you can ask me no worries, you can observe a child every day. It's an ongoing process. But with regard to assessment, what happens is in the early years, we have a progress check at two. When the child completes two, we have a check. You know why? Because we know that there are seven areas of development in EYFS and the prime areas are PD, that is physical development, PSE, uh, person social emotional, and you have the communication and language, which is called C and L. So you must see that whether three have been developed until how much on a scale of 10 it has developed. This is important, very important for you. Because if you feel that there is a delay, then you know what you will do? You will do the early intervention. It might be an additional need. It might be a Senko child. You never know, don't delay. So a progress check at two is very, very important. And then reception baseline. Reception baseline is something a child is coming to your setting uh, for KG1, LKG. Before that, you can give a little bit of an activity based uh, um, combo game or a play for them to understand whether the child understand a little bit of letters or numbers or colors, simple blocks you can give and ask the child to count. Yeah. Usually we do that, right? Before we enroll a child, it's called reception baseline. You put a baseline and find how much they have, you know, sailed in order to make your activity planning more fruitful. Then comes your formative, your summative. You know how it works, yeah? In your own setting, you know the progress card. You know how it works. You know what's an anecdotal file. How do you collect anecdotes? Yes, perfect. So let's go to the right image again. You start with observation. Then what do you do with the data that you have collected based on your observation? You're going to do an assessment. Analyze critically where each individual child is standing, how much the progress has taken place, and what's the next step planner for each individual child. Yeah, that's most important. Then what do you do? I'm going to plan again because I want to work on the next step based on the assessment that I have made. So I'm going to do planning. What's next? with your own experience 
and the opportunity that you have provided for the child and the way the child has progressed. Keep all of it plan again. So let's see here. Okay, it's a beautiful example here, right? You have allowed children to go free play, outdoor, just a ball, kick, that's it. Then now what do you see? You can observe PSE, whether this child is able to go with this child, whether this child is having a social behavior where he's not pushing when the ball is not coming to him. Yeah. And whether all of them are collaboratively working. Okay. Equal chances. Yes. Most important cross motor skill, whether you're able to kick the ball or not. Yeah. If the ball goes off the boundary, are you able to pick it up? Do you have the fine motor to hold the ball, take it above your head? and throw it are you able to do yes all these are being observed okay in case of the if child a is unable to do what will you do put him on the trampoline let him jump he will get that grip then put him on the ground he will do it nicely put him on the hopscotch with numbers he will love it like that you will draw your assessment your critical evaluation on on the observation that you made at the outdoor then put the next step planner make your activity plan i'm going to give you the um cream of an activity plan it will definitely help you okay it's in the next slide okay so what is this picture you are giving a fine motor skill ask the child to take the ink filler yeah press suck water and pour it in the blue cup the blue cap or whatever it's all bottle caps so what happens is now i have to count the number of droplets i have to first search what is blue here yeah and then if there are many blues i have to look at the teacher and ask which blue are you saying if she says all the blues then i might have to do then i will tell my child can you go back and from there squeeze it here shoot it out so i hand coordination i am not asking about this green or this blue i'm asking her to do this white which is away from her i will ch you know challenge the child from this one to this one look at this one sound buttons i give a card there is a picture of a frog or a toad or whatever then i ask the child to put the sound button and what is missing the r is also missing right the child will also write what is missing okay before this activity i will give this activity because the children have to associate with the a with the apple or a with the alligator buck with the banana yeah buck with the brush k with the car k with the cow so they have to associate so i play this also if i feel that the child knows all five but not the sixth one okay i'm going to give another activity for him to help in finding this maybe the next craft activity will be will be on the fish will be on the fins will be on the feather so i'm going to focus on f, letter f yeah that's my observation okay what are these these are jelly beans yeah you speak on the rainbow like you put some warm water on a paper plate and all of this it leaves color and then it speaks about your primary secondary and tertiary colors you speak on the rainbow as well but you don't intend to do it you don't tell them that it is tertiary colors no but they find out very easily because you're giving them an activity when you mix two colors what happens that's the critical thinking question you are asking them then after mixing the child will be able to see and tell you oh if you mix yellow and red it becomes orange yes because the child could see it it doesn't have to believe you saying but the child can see it now look at the, this one sorting and graphing kg1 the lkg children will be able to do this have you will you believe that the children will do this you know uh, at the age of three and a half or two and a half or, or four, they will be able to do it. All that they will be able to do is two and a half to three and a half will pick up in a bowl of mixed jelly and try to put it in each cup. The three and a half to four and a half and four and a half to five and a half will be able to relate with the color and this graph. That is just the colors. Then four and a half will count and put it if you say this is number three, only three beans will get in, jelly beans. Yeah, four and a half to five and a half will be able to mix this and find the secondary colors. So you keep challenging based on all the activities that you gave, the observation that you did, what are you going to do? You're going to do some kind of a writing that is going to help your observation methods. So today it's very important. We're going to do the observation methods. Please take down notes. Yeah. 
free description what's a free description free description is uh, child x came in the morning sat near the construction corner took four blocks and was looking for a friend to help him stack it's a free description throughout the day you are talking about whatever the child has done it's a free descriptive way of observing narrative way you completely narrated the whole day scenario of a child yeah that's narrative event sampling event means in this particular event when this happened between these two children i took a sample that every time the child is going for drinking water the other boy is snatching his bottle at that event this boy is hurting him that's the observation i've made this has happened thrice so i need to work on that time sampling for every 20 minutes 2 minutes you observe a child every 20 minutes only 2 minutes you will see the child you make your observation what happened today in that particular like 9 o'clock to 1 o'clock every 20 minutes 2 minutes i was observing the child how is it going to help me in the effective planning lesson planning how can i include this that is time sample sociogram sociogram is with social skills the children do not have social skills they don't want to talk to others they don't want to share they don't want to listen this sociogram will help you to tell you that you know child x and child y budding peers and i have you know your activity your observation will say that today i'm going to have a buddy system for them he takes the crayons and he will take the brush both of them will do the coloring and swap the i mean like objects like you know crayons goes to his hand brush goes to his hand then they have to collaboratively work let's see the sociogram let's see the social skills target child this is for a particular child you don't tell that you know this is my target you don't tell anyone yeah it's confidentiality because there is an issue with the child before talking to a parent you need some substantial observation so you target a particular child not to you know uh hurt the child it's for that particular child because he lacks something before you talk to the parent you need such observations talk to the senko and then sit with the senko sit with your mentor sit with your line manager your principal sort it out then the principal or the mentor will talk to the coordinator or somebody you know the higher up will talk to the parent in the right way so that you can support the child what's the checklist you have this psc tick pd tick L cam communication and language tick it's a checklist movement record everywhere the child moved i did the observation okay with all of these observation methods it can be individual it could be a group it could be a planned observation it could be a spontaneous spontaneous means i would like to give you an example when i was in the class the child was talking about alligator eh? alligator and then they were confused between a croc, a crocodile and an alligator. And then another child said, Miss Ranchni, you know what, the face part, the front. Then we were looking at the videos because they got confused. Then I said, Miss Ranchni is confused. We do not know who's the alligator and who's going to be the croc. Then they said that, look at this long thing. Yeah, that's a snout. The child said it's a snout. I was like, you know, like surprised. It's a spontaneous thing for the child. Yeah, never expected. It comes spontaneous because this was on a topic. What's a wow moment? You can think that Miss Ranchini's spontaneous and wow looks like similar. No. When you are talking about that alligator, that croc topic, it came spontaneous for the child. So that's spontaneous. Out of the blues, all of a sudden, a child comes and says that, Miss Ranchini, you know what? The rainbow occurred when there was a bit of a sunshine and the rain. <gasps> wow, baby, never knew that you know that how a rainbow is formed. Come on, let's go and, you know, share with our friends. That's a wow moment. So you put a wow wall for the child. Collect this observation and put it with your name. I'm going to show that how it looks. It makes more sense. Let's go here. Okay, we spoke on the right side, the, the kind of observation, how it is useful. Now observation helps in transition that is home to school in your school the child has studied it's going to another school because of some kind of a relocation or some for some reason then it helps in transition because you observe everything give an anecdotal file to the parent or to the next teacher or to the next um, school also yeah ensures transitions 
challenging experience of a child so if you look into the life journey of the child learning journal it will show you in the month of april the child was here my observations june lovely he was here jan i can see that he's writing that's my observation he's able to speak observation builds parent partnership didn't i tell you working together with other professionals that is for example let's take a sent child a child with speech issues first of all you have to observe pass on the observation to your senko that is your sen department in your setting in your school okay who's an internal department and the parent has already identified yeah so what she will do she will put to another person who is called the other professional outside the school could be the senko expert on speech therapist yeah he's a speech therapist all four of them work together for the benefit of the child keep the child at the center okay so i would request that you can get into development matters yeah the updated version 2023 refer to all the 17 early learning goals there there it will show you what is emerging what is expected how it is exceeding those grids you can see in the early years right that will help you to observe let's get to the next one this is pretty interesting this is how observations are written now look here bilal independent writing at bc table the teacher is writing bilal had a wobbly tooth which means he had a tooth issue so he decided to write a letter to the tooth fairy so cute look at the teacher how nicely she has written yeah so the boy is having some tooth issues he's writing to the tooth fairy oh tooth fairy please take care of my tooth it's paining it's wobbly look at this one the child has written something yeah and no one understands actually the child is reading as snails like leaves that is his writing that is what he wants to convey how do you know this you must give that kind of a self-confidence for the child to say that baby can you tell me what have you written the child will say immediately right below the post-it slip yeah this if it happens in the month of june look at his writing in the month of feb and compare and give a star there to this also i would love, love to give a heart because i'm that kind of a teacher love children scribbling yeah it starts there fine look here was able to build and construct talked about what he wanted to do and he took turns on this particular date this has been written and the teacher initial is here this is called a observation which can be a post-it slip observation where you take so is it very lengthy no it's very crisp but it is detailed can you see there is a way to use the language and write observations also this is very very interesting right building relationship through gesture and talk so this is the topic you're going to observe your children based on this today okay so what you will do the children were involved in a new counting game okay all these three the adult worked alongside the group as each child took their turn a said can we play again tomorrow what does it mean they took turns they are done with the game they're going to do into another activity so they said that can we do it tomorrow which means they are building the relationship psed right this is what you observe look at this one very interesting on arrival s s means it's one child straight went over to the book corner okay what did he do okay he okay then sharing a book about bears and listen to the children talking about the book which means he is enhancing his listening skills probably in the month of april april you would have been struggling with him to listen you would have been begging him like you know are you able to listen i'm talking to you please look at my face don't say all of that use such strategies yeah help them to go to the read corner find out how they are doing with their listening skills when she speaks on bears then he must listen now you should ask miss ranjini do you think the small child will be able to read the child will make up stories looking at the picture if you go to the subtitles the the, the print it will be different once upon a time there lived an elephant who was very close to the dinosaur probably that's the story but the child will make up the story a big elephant stomped the dinosaur the dinosaur fell into the pit so that could be the story the child is you know evolving a kind of you know weaving his own story right i love that imagination and creativity we are going to get into the third topic right the third topic is activity planning very very important i want you to take a snapshot of this you must number your plans 
because when you number your plants, it's easy for you to go with your coordinator to have a discussion on the plan five. She will say that which plan go, you know, it, it went well this week. Miss third plan went well. Fourth plan, I think I need to work on it. Okay, can we see the plans? You always need to have the numbers on your activity planning. Yeah, for that particular month, say 10 plans. Okay, number it. Please put the date and time. Yeah, put the topic. Could be like language. Okay, fine, no worries. Literacy. Then the class, the age. Very, very important. You know why you want to put the age? You can ask me, Miss Ranjani, I know my class. I work with the three to four and the four to five. Why do you want me to put in every plan? No. Whoever is reviewing the plan, that is the coordinator or your head lead, we will see the resources and the plan, whether it is age appropriate. That is why you put the age there. If you say two to three year old or four to five, okay, let's keep four to five. And you are just giving them some rattles to play. No, you're not enough challenging them. You should be giving them some kind of a magnet to play. So we check on the resources as per the age, right? Go to the aim. You definitely have an aim. That's called the learning objective. And that has to be connected with your curriculum framework. Yeah, it should be aligned with your NEP policy, your own curriculum of your school. Just check that in this box. Then most important is your enabling environment. A class should have a construction corner should have a reading corner must have a literacy corner must have a math corner as per earlier you must have all the seven corners okay when you create the corner what do you check you check on the risk assessment are there sharp edges are there wet floors are there liquids open in the washroom yeah these days the cleaning liquids comes in different colors don't you think the children will think that it's a rose milk yeah risk assessment an allergy list. Every soft board in the class must have an allergy list. Which child is allergic to what? Is the child allergic to peanut? In this part of the world, many children are allergic to peanut. There are many children are allergic to sand. Yeah, dust. Okay, maybe in some part of our India, some children are allergic to rinse, lemon rinse, orange rinse. I myself have seen children allergic. So we can't have that activity, right? We must think about the allergy list, the, the, the preferences, the intolerance of the children also. That comes over here, right? Theoretical perspective. Did your planning embrace Maria Montessori? Did your planning embrace Balbi theory? Did your planning embrace Jean Piaget? Or did your planning embrace Stephen? Which theorist are you bringing in for this literacy plan? You must have that there. Only then the EYP, the earliest practitioner, will have the habit of having a continuous professional development, which means research. You must research on that. Then come over here. Your role and role of others. Most often, you know what happens? You don't go well with your assistant teacher. That is because she doesn't know what to do. You do not know what you're doing. Most often it happens. The kind of a little bit, you know, the glitch is there. Establish your role and her role very nicely. Yes, equally divide your children. Yeah, then pedagogical approach. That's the pedagogical approach. What do you want to do? Collaboration, bringing them together. What is integration? My topic was literacy here, but I will integrate math here. The number of sounds that they do, or for example, cat, k, a, t, three sounds. So I will integrate math and say number three, right? Integration, getting into the other topic. Differentiation. What is differentiation? We already spoke about individual needs. We spoke about children with allergy. We spoke about children with intolerance. We spoke about children who are very smart. And we also spoke about children who are very sluggish. So your plan should help all of them. That is differentiation. You are not differentiating the child. You are differentiating your approach. Your pedagogical approach should be aligned to serve all the children. Right? Fine. Description of the play. So here you describe your activity in just simple words like two lines, three lines. That's enough. TA partnership. What is sustained shared thinking and scaffolding? I'm going to speak that in the next one. Okay. Holistic development. Yeah. Himani was saying holistic development. Abdul Salam sir was saying, let's look into the holistic development. What is that? When you do literacy, you also look into the personal, social, emotional, how the children are getting together. To make that sound card. 
you also look into how the children are manipulating the resources which is fine motor you are also enabling the children to go on the hopscotch which is gross motor and put some number cards on the floor i'm sorry the literacy letter cards then you are also looking into um, the math i already told you the number of sums you are also giving them an activity and giving them an ex experience of art craft right so you're covering all of it if you're talking about sun you will cover the evs also sun is only one you cannot have two sun right and it comes in the morning it gives light it gives energy so you speak on the science part also so it is called holistic overall development with one topic reflection um eyp is here my request is please reflect please every week you reflect how did it go for you next time how well you want to do it okay based on your observation on the plan how you want to excel in your professional practices probably last week i conducted this lesson with this 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 but next week i want to show my flavor i can do it much better which theory influenced you this time you took maria montessori you want to try uh, piaget next time and see how it you know confluence there that is important if you have any other remarks okay find it here yeah now it's important that when we do this what is there engagement should be there motivation for the children should be there thinking skills should be there we are taking this part to the last part of our session okay now let's look into these two right okay when it is engagement you are going to help the child to play and explore so there are two things i want you to write down that is adult initiated child initiated play when it is adult initiated the teacher initiates the play she enables the environment she initiates it but she will never interfere in the exploration skill of the child she will not say that you should only build a dinosaur have you ever seen teachers when you go to some classes you have 25 apple uh, coloring and it is on the wall how why why all of them should do only apple they can do alligator they can do an ant why a and a and only apple yeah probably they had a different plan don't stamp their plans they are very explorative okay play playing with what they know yes they pretend and play that comes role play being willing to have a go you know what is to have a go challenge them so if you have your activity plan when you have the mediocre plan where this is your lesson objective have a basket the real basket put um um a kind of a name card there says challenge basket and put a thumbs up have a smiley and say that you know there are some children who are very brainy in 10th minute they will finish your activity and they'll be roaming around making noise or they will not know what to do it's not their fault it's our fault we do not know how to engage them yeah that's called engagement here we need to give a challenge basket and say that come on have a go let's see how far we can sail i know that you can do it give the motivation also challenging is not like negatively challenging challenging is like i have you know a lot of faith in you i will be you know i can see that you will have a go come on try i'm i'm just right here if you are stuck you can call me then motivation you must tell some children you know they try once just simple building blocks then they throw it away they go to the next corner they want to try something throw it away go to the next one no 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 you should never allow that yeah you must positively tell them to say keep on trying because that's why you have the star chart right i'm going to give you a star now comes critical thinking this portion i am going to take it here yeah this is i think therefore i can this is critical thinking very important many teachers will struggle to how to frame questions for example teachers if you ask a question do you like this do you like the ball if the child says no what is the next question that you can ask i already said no to you teacher you cannot ask me further right yeah so there is a way to ask questions and how you can form questions in a nice cloud like a proud cloud or a rain drop i will show you such pictures also how you can hang those questions and how you can um you know kindle the interest of the children to answer questions okay so basically thinking process is like this there is a concept you have a principle 
you have some kind of an understanding which is comprehension you will again problem solve with your own brains finally you will de decide you know decision making then what happens you will research further then what you will do you will again compose something then you will try to tell what you understood so it's a process thinking is a process if you want to ask the child some questions first of all listen carefully what the child is saying okay what the child is doing maintain some eye contact try suggesting this is when i said scaffolding i will not teach you there i will tell you here you know what scaffolding scaffolding means like you have the structure you know everywhere you have you see construction happening there is a iron um you know it's like a structure which is outside the real uh, construction which is happening just to support the structure that's called scaffolding so a teacher will go and scaffold the child but will definitely not break the child's exploration so she will ask maybe you could try yeah you can try she will just leave it there she will not say that maybe you can try with the building blocks to make a burj khalifa no why burj khalifa just because you are in dubai or why uh, you know an lic building if you have to be in chennai not required maybe you can try what you like with these blocks that's the right question try offering your own experiences like you know what happened last week uh, george i went to the park with the sand i tried to make a castle then he will say miss ranjana i also want to do a castle okay come on let's go to the sand play look at the fine motor skills there for the child so observe their body language give your attention yeah and then offer an alternative view point maybe the wolf just wanted a friend because you are doing a story with the child right you must say that you know maybe the wolf wanted a friend that is why he did like this are we going to find fault with the wolf the children will say no 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 so what are we going to do let's consider what the wolf is feeling bring the emoji cards wolf you have the toy wolf what are you feeling are you feeling sad are you feeling happy yeah imaginary pretend and role play will help children psc right so the five c's of critical thinking skills are thinking creativity communication collaboration leadership and character you know what most often parents feel bad that ma'am how much ever i say is not listening to me no this can happen just not an overnight but in couple of months you can see his character transforming because as much as you are giving the space for him to look into another perspective he will be able to understand mom's perspective dad's perspective give respect and also take respect right let's go to the next one let's dive in so these are the questions please take a note of this take a snapshot then make a note of it and please have it in your class put them as clouds okay let's go from here what's happening gather the basic information and began to think of questions what's happening if you ask them what is happening here they will say this this is happening that is happening why do you think it is important that this is happening the next question okay what don't i see which means what did i miss to see here right you have a big book a bound book and there are many characters the child said this is happening that is happening okay what did you miss out then the child will look for what he missed how do you know that you have missed it the child will further explain oh who's saying this the child will say the author is saying oh really what else do you think is happening in the story then the child will explain these are the questions you must type it out put it on a laminated card but i would give you a best idea uh, take an a4 sheet or any plain sheet a3 sheet first laminate it cut into rectangles long long rectangles like you know however you can have the question there on the and then use your marker you know what you all need only 10 strips of laminated sheet and you can erase the question because it's marker it's laminated it will go off very easily you can wipe it right and then with a dry cloth don't use a wet cloth okay then little bit water will seep in and then it'll get spoiled right cut them into 10 pieces and have it write all these questions put them on the read corner then try to read the question for the child the child will not know how to read it but you read it right and slowly at the end of the fifth year you can see the child reading i 
see, what, how, do, I, little bit the child will read. Yeah? Perfect. Let's go here. How do you know this? How do you, you know, would your perspective be different if you were on the opposite side? For example, there is a game of cricket. Somebody hurt somebody. It's in the story. Then you should ask him. Then the child says, it's bad, Miss Ranjani, to hurt him. What will happen if you're on the opposite side? Yeah? How, if you would have hurt, oh, I would have felt very bad, Miss Ranjani. Which emoji cards will you pick it up? Sad face. Oh, my God. Do you think it's the right thing to do? No. Do you agree or disagree? And why do you disagree with me? Such questions when you ask, the child brain opens up for a great future. It can problem solve. It can be a good leader. 20 years leader, he will be on some dais, you know, problem solving, great coding. You never know. He will be doing an AI, an artificial intelligence. You never know. But today you enabled him. Okay? Okay. So let's go to the next one. Right. This is our investigation corner. And I can show you some kind of a magnifying glass once I stop the screen share, right? So, okay. So, in this, you can have all of these questions. So, ask the children to go to the outdoor on a Friday morning. Give them a basket. Let them pick whatever they see. Small leaf, stone, different colored leaves, stick, whatever they can find. Ask them to come and put it on your, uh, what is this called? The tray, right? And then give them some magnets. Give them some magnifying glass and put some, some, you know, magnetic attractive uh, pins and all of that. Ask them which one is attracting. You are teaching them magnets at the age of three and a half to four and a half without even telling them magnetic means this is the nature of magnet. No. Yeah. So that's, and look at this one. Yeah. How far am I standing? It's just a tissue roll t-shirt. Simple carton box, small basket, right? Yeah, we are going on a, you know, a adventurous hunt. Okay, sit inside. No worries. What are you looking? What do you see? Can you kindly explain what did you see? How far it is? So the children are able to understand language as well as math. That is positional as well as far, near, up, down, behind. A lot of things. They also understand prepositions without even understanding what's a preposition. And now come here. They are jelly beans and some kind of a beads. The child is able to have a scoop up activity. So if it scoops one, you, he must able to count, which means estimation. He cannot count like one, two, three, four. He must say, I think, I guess I have 10. Okay, then the next friend will come and count each one. If it is nine, then the children will say, let's have a go, which means challenging the child. Let's have a go one more time, right? Estimation. Then there are a lot of questions. I would love these questions personally to come in your class. I wonder why, why this is happening. I wonder how it is happening. I believe, is it this way? What do you feel? I may look, play with this game. How about you? And what do you like to play with this game? What is inspiring you? Okay. Oh, you decided to pick up the goat. Why did you make this decision? May I understand that? Yeah. How do you think this happened? There were three goats. You know, the, 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 the story, the three goats that crossed the bridge. Okay. So what do you think? What could have happened if there is no bridge? Oh, they can always go down the river. Oh, do you think they can sustain that? They can swim? What will happen? Oh, probably I can be a fairy and pick up all the three goats. So you never know what they think. Bring out all that is possible from their brains. Okay, what would you do differently next time? If you are the author, can you give a next character to the story? Take Goldilocks. Goldilocks had a sister. Her name is Bundley Locks. Let's give Bundley Locks, yeah. And she has a sister. Okay, so the another child will say, she's no more Goldie Locks and three bears. This is going to be siblings and the three bears. Oh, beautiful title. Come on, one of the child will draw. Critical thinking, right? Let's go to the next one. Yes. Teachers, I prefer in my schools and nurseries that questions should be in this cloud. So take a printout of this, laminate the sheet, cut them in different colors and keep it. Take your marker and write each question here and post it like this on the wall. Post it like this. Take the child and please ask the child the question. 
and say it is a proud cloud. So you give a star. Whoever attempts this question for a day gets a star. On a week basis, during circle time, we're going to count the number of stars for the number of questions we answered. Now you must ask me a question, Ms. Ranjani. If they don't read, how do you think they will belong? No worries. Put the question, also put the picture. With the visuals, they will understand, right? So this can go in the mark making. This can go in collaborative peer share, right? If you want to show collaborativeness, you know what you have to do? You should put two clouds and two children pictures. Show it to them, which means they have to answer the question. And if the theme-based dino week, if it's going to be dinosaur, then only the dinosaur will ask all the questions, right? So thank you so much. We looked for, okay, this is my number and you can come on LinkedIn for more professional practices. We're gonna stop the screen share here. And uh, I guess so, we are right there, right? So if you have any doubts, you can let me know. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Your words of wisdom have definitely added on to the intellectual pursuits of our esteemed participants. I'm sure we must be having some queries by our participants. Dear participants, you may virtually raise your hand and your name will be called out and your questions will be taken by ma'am. Do we have any questions from the participants? While they are popping up with questions, please make this for looking eyes, okay? While you have a question, I will stop there. Have a magnifying glass for investigation will rightly help. Okay. Have critical thinking questions like a image like this. Whenever you pop this, the child will think and answer, right? Instead of you wasting your energy saying, can you think? Can you think? No, no, not required. Show this. Yeah. And then for story, please have this. Budding, pure collaboration, show this. They will like, yeah, they'll work together. If you show this, they have to work together. Right? For win down games, show this. Calm down. Yeah? Right? And what you will say? Calm seas. If you say calm seas, they have to be quiet. Right? I think we all need this momentarily. <laughs> yes. And then, Ranjri loves you all. A kissy and a huggy to all the learners here. Right? You must show this to your children. They love you. Right? Yeah. It's important to say that, you know, that you love each other. That's most important. Different kinds of fishes. You can show something like this and the children will go around, right? Perfect. And a big thank you and a star to everyone, right? High five. Great. Any questions? A golden star right back at you, ma'am. We are waiting for questions, dear participants. Uh, okay. You may virtually raise your hand or you may post your question in the meeting chat box. We will take your questions there. Yeah, and I would like to show you this. It's available in the store, right? You have the small slates that say that, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Use it for circle time when it is Friday. Okay, have some nice activity at the outdoor and Monday also, right? Window games comes on the Friday and some nice outdoor comes on the Monday, right? You can have like this. You can pen there, right? Yeah. Perfect. Salam, sir. I think uh, our participants have no doubts so far because ma'am explained so well. So should we, sir, continue with the vote of thanks? Yes, of course, please. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Right away. I would like to extend our gratefulness and appreciation for Madam Ranjani Harigopal Dasa for broadening our horizons and regaling us with this boundless discourse. I'm sure we will apply these tenets in our teaching modus operandi and ensure that our little learners reap maximum benefit out of it. Dear participants, kindly note the link for certificate and feedback form has been already posted. You're requested to fill up the form with all the necessary details. I, Himani Bakshi, along with the CBSE Bharat Sahodaya Complex, would like to thank Madam Dasa once again for her gracious presence and an enriching, enriching experience. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Abdul Salam for his magnanimous support and guidance to the teaching fraternity always. Thank you, sir, for this great opportunity.
A big thank you to the technical team and Arun Mohan sir for this flawless execution of today's session. And most importantly, thank you a million times to all the participants for their enthusiasm. I sincerely hope we earned the privilege of your time. Over to you, Salam sir. Thank you, Himani, ma'am. As usual, uh, wonderfully, you know, you have moderated the yes, session and uh, adding beauty of the sessions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, Ms. Ranchini, I should say that uh, it is one of the best sessions uh, Parasakodi and BTAC ever had among the 150 sessions. And uh, I should say that extraordinary preparation, extraordinary timing. See, uh, this effort is actually a role model for uh, you know all of us to follow. How you know lots of properties, it's kind of uh, what do you call experiential learning. Though we are you know in different places, we felt like we are experiencing what what you are you know explaining and demonstrating. So uh, thank you so much, uh, and I would like to request the participants to you know. Uh, bring this, uh, you know, talented uh, resource person to your school, down to your school, though she is in UAE, but definitely her presence uh, make a difference in your school in the pre-primary stage. Uh, she has lots of ideas, lots of, you know, enthusiasm, passion. It is out of passion that she is, you know, coming to us and uh, offering such sessions. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, everybody will be, you know, enriched by her sessions in future as well. We are happy to associate with Anjini, ma'am, and uh, uh, thank you so much uh, on behalf of, you know, each and every participant who have joined. I am conveying their love and admiration and their, you know, uh, what do you call congratulations uh, to you for this wonderful session. You can see the chat box full of appreciation for your work, indeed. So uh, thank you, Renshini, ma'am. You can be happy because our participants are much happier. And uh, thank you, Bina, ma'am. Bina, ma'am, has been here throughout the session and uh, uh, supporting us and I don't know him and uh, everyone. So uh, this will be posted in the YouTube and uh, can be taken as a reference, you know, uh, section uh, later on and those who have missed uh, don't worry uh, you can uh, watch the session and uh, you can make use of but please implement uh, the strategies there were lots of strategies implement in the classroom uh, and we are pretty sure that you will do it because we have seen your passion and uh, your enthusiasm so Ranjini ma'am once again thank you so much we'll uh, associate again and each and everyone, uh, Kimani, ma'am, thanks a lot to you. And thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Sorry for a bad throat today. <laughs> Delhi dust doing wonders. Yeah. Thank you, Kimani. Thank, thank you, you Ranjini, so ma'am. Thank you for moderating. And thank, thank you, Bina Jacob, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Arun Mohan. And thank you, Abdul Salam, sir. Can we have a closing remark from Bina, ma'am. Yes. Sir, I was, I see, uh, I was actually observing and uh, I took a snaps and I sent to my KG coordinator. They could not uh, enter to the session because already it is uh, 300. And they were, you know, asking me like, uh, ma'am, we cannot enter. But I told, no worry, the link will be sent later by uh, Salam, sir. And always I say to you, you know, ma'am, I'm so happy to hear you. I learned a lot. Even I love KG section. I love to be there in the KG section. So I learned a lot. And so that I will be teaching my, uh, you know, KG teachers. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank you, Abdul Salam, sir. One if more time. Anybody, if any participant wishes to speak, you know, for a few minutes, uh, we are open. We have uh, 10 minutes more. Uh, yeah. They can raise their hands. For the first time, I have done my session on time. Abdul Salam sir is very happy. Yes, and he has given me a thumbs up. Yeah, good. We've been on time. Dear participants, if you have anything to add on,
to today's session or any query, please raise your virtual hands. We'll unmute you. You may have a word with our very talented resource person. If they can give their feedback also, they want yes. to speak up. We, have, we, we can see lots of feedback in the chat box. Yes. All right, then. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you, Salam, sir. Thank you, Ranjini, ma'am. Thank you, Bina, ma'am. Have Thank a good night. All. Bye, Arun Mohan, sir. sir. Thank you. Thank you, Arun. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Abdul Salam. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you, Binati, sir. Thank you, Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Salam, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Imani, ma'am.